Hi there, I've got a video out about a trip myself and others did to not only Grimes Graves, which is a Neolithic flint mine site, but we also went back to our host Will Lord's Lodge where he does his flint napping and other courses. Now, to make sure that the video wasn't too long, I've condensed down the flint napping bits quite severely. So what I've done, I've put it all together and put it out as a separate video, because otherwise I'll just delete this footage forever. Enjoy. Now you see something like that. The idea of making an axe out of that. You could, but I'd like better. Mm. And flint napping is, um, is an ar arrangement of good quality thinking. So you think well by taking good, you, you give yourself good, good opportunities rather than bad opportunities. It's a better tablet, that would be suitable for one of you. Right, so I'm going to sort of put a few of these bits down. And what you might do is you might pick it up, you might tap it once, and you tap it once and it's full straighten off, and it's like, well that's the end of that. Well that's flint napping. And so, see that I keep turning it over. I turn it over because I'm trying to get on a nice flat fresh face. And that's leading me into quite a lot of stock there. So I've got a reasonable nice tablet of stone there, right? Um, you could potentially say, hey, I like that because that's already axe shape. Um, and I'm going to do that at the moment. I'm going to keep doing that for a minute because I'm going to take the axe out the middle of here. So I'm doing what would be a bad idea for you, but I'm creating things that are going to be a good idea for you. So in reference to looking at where my axe is, my axe actually lays in here, right? So this boy's got to come off. That's the only clean bit of flint I can see. It didn't break well. Okay, it could go higher. That's it. Good. Got that off. Something like that. You wouldn't again. You wouldn't go for a, an axe out of that. You'd turn it into a blade core because it's. A blade core is something that you can just take tools off. So you use that flat top there and you just keep casting flakes down. Once you're behind the skin of the flint, which is the cortex, you've got access into the nice material. So that's down there. So now we've got something which technically is looking a lot more available. There, there, there are times, I mean there's a thousand things I could say about what, what is going on with the stone, the type of stone it is, where it's come from and everything, but I'm just going to fit it into the sequence as we go. So you can see that because these angles lay in at about 70 degrees to this surface, I've got access, I've got a place to actually go, and that allows me to keep casting the flint off mm -hmm. like such. The trouble is, is that can only go on for so long before we start arriving at the whole idea of what about the cortex on this side. So what we're going to do is going to, I'm going to begin to think slightly differently now. So I'm going to pick up a stone, which you can see this is quite granular. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to build a shape here that's a bit better than the shape that exists currently. It's going to get called a platform. I'm going to cast something out from here. <coughs> and that's going to be the first. That's technically turns this into a biface, mean, meaning that the tool is in the middle and we're flaking material over either side. Outside of that piece of thinking, right? I could say, right, I'm looking at this, and I'm going to make. I'm going to get, take all these bits off, and that'll be an axe because that'll be the right shape. But actually, what that will be is it will be it will be flat on one side and it'll have a great big dome on the other because I've just worked on that face. So what we do is we spend a lot of time tilting these shapes and debrading them and building up something which constitutes to looking like a platform. That's a bit chewed up that edge. Um, 
there was a couple of things that happened with this hammer which left that all a bit frayed. As we go further in what you'll see is you'll see some platform tidying and you'll actually hopefully start seeing some sense. So at this point I'm going to start using a soft hammer. Not all the time because there's still some other stuff to do but the reason I'm here, going to use a soft hammer because instead of hitting an internal sur flat surface I'm actually going to hit the edge. So that's and what you'll get out of that is you'll get longer but thinner flakes and the cost is less to the overall circumference of the whole thing. So if an, if an archaeologist popped along and he looked down there at the debitage, if he knows what he's looking at, he should be able to tell you what the guy was working with because the flake the flakes will be different. Some will have <coughs> platforms and some will, will have hardly any platform, but it will have bulbs of percussion from an abraded edge. But you'll be surprised, a lot of archaeologists actually don't even know that, you know, because perhaps they've been text, textbook archaeologists, and there's the value in what we're doing, which is experimental archaeology, if you like. trying to get a shape here so I can get up and over that but sometimes it's difficult because you don't have a great deal of room for manoeuvre looks alright yeah, ish so what we have here is we have actually the first part of what could visibly be the axe because things are transcending e evenly away from either point Around that, there's still a lot of management to do. So one of the things I could really do with is a power flake. And what I mean by that is I'd like to take a big old top off here. A, a, a big strong move. Because otherwise I'm sort of tentatively going at it. And flint napping is about believing in big ideas so that you can get down to a tablet of stone that you can manage easily. So what we'll do to do that is we're going to turn that at a funny old angle. So basically I'm tilting it up and I'm going to put I'm going to take the back of that off so that instead of looking at what we've got as a rounded cortex, like that you're just going to bounce off, we're going to have a concave flat face leading at 70 degrees into this. And that's the plan anyway. It's a bit shallow. I would have liked that to have been a bit deeper but it's still going to give me access. These are braiders, sometimes they won't stand up to what you're about to try and do. So I'm going to swap that over for a nice quartzite block. That's a big, big flake. In some respects, you see how that flake has actually met the circumference and you can go to the back of it and push it off. That's very much like the Neanderthals were thinking 30,000 years ago and they were making something called the Lavoir Axe. It's ready, it doesn't need anything else. Um, <coughs> however, that were archaeology made the understanding that that's the only thing they wanted. And then what they would do is they would create that situation again and then they'd take another one. So this becomes a stack of hand axes. Um, but funnily enough, to get that, what you've got to do is you've got to keep chasing, chasing flakes into the crest to rebuild it. And when in, in the management of doing that, what you get is you get something called Lavawa points. Well, there's very little difference between a Lavawa point and a Lavawa hand axe. So actually, if you think about it, what I've actually got is a radial blade, blade core. We're serving flakes out over a hill and every tool that comes off is principally king good that's another one Boom. one hit you're getting a tool that was good thinking um so you see what i'm going to do with him i want to get down there because i've got a lovely exit strategy either side so we come here for that 
we turn that over and we're down there like that and even that most of the time you're looking at these as the tool edges but actually that can be the tool edge as well many many people when they're working on bone or out or bows they're using that bridged edge there because it's impervious to any secondary breaking or quite often what you'll do as well is you'll abrade that dull like like that so you know you can't cut your hand on it put some teeth into there by doing something like <coughs> and now you're making a saw so you can start cross cutting through bones so you, all of a sudden everything that's happening starts contributing and building into toolkits so you'll see times of delicate work because I don't need a lot, we just need it to be controlled and then you'll see times of power so what I'm going to do with that boy is it's another close edge one and I want you to see how I'm using this I'm taking that to the side of the leg when it's up too high you start hitting the flint and you start bruising your leg so you come out to one side and you can start doing that the other thing, now we've started taking a lot of flakes off, what you're seeing is you're seeing a very zigzag scenario going on along the edges. So that kind of is your that's kind of your map. Because you've got to be able to read what you're up to really. Now that one there is not a good choice at the moment because it's tucked down behind these two hills. So it's hard to get at. So what I'd do is I'd deal with these boys perhaps in a in it, uh, and as a priority over that so you're prioritizing all the time um, hopefully from uh, the consideration of good ideas there we go. sometimes you've got to take a bit of way so you can construct a decent platform now here's an idea, but it's a bad idea, but I could possibly go for it, but what I need to do is I need to show you why it might be a bad idea. I built a platform there, but if you look at where I'm sending the flake, the flake's actually going around the corner, right? And it's a little bit hollow in front of leading to a hump here. So technically I'm asking a flake to travel to be thin and then suddenly get thick. And the reality of it is it's probably going to snap there, leaving me with a brand new problem. So what you do instead of that, if you, if you can recognise that that might be an outcome, then you've got a choice. And so a better choice would be to, be to say to yourself, well, I know I've got that platform, that can sit and wait. We'll build a brand new platform here. That looks reasonably consistent and the view is is to hit that there and if I'm lucky I'll get to here um, if I'm not you see so with the amount of coffee and alcohol that I drink I probably get the shakes, but I put it down to flint napping because I'm going through a physical ordeal here. <laughs> it's, actually, it's actually, this is not, I'm not playing when I go for that. There's a, there's a delivery of like, right, you ready? That's as best as I could give it. I gave it my best. Bang. And because of that, I'm getting what I want. Once I start <laughs> doing that, it's like, that's not how to talk to Flint. There are times when you need to see what you're about to ask for. And you need to be, you need, you're thinking big and you become an instruction of force. So here, I'd like to go through here, but you see how that pilt was out and it looks feeble? So that really isn't a launch pad. So what I'm going to do there is I'm going to take off some small flakes Thank you, Maud. Thank 
Yeah. And what that builds is that builds a stronger suggestion because I've just tilted that back. You'll be noticing there's a hell of a lot of information flying off my lips at the moment because I'm saying exactly what I'm doing in account for everything that I am doing. That must make you feel like, oh my god. But actually it doesn't have to. Because um, at the end of the day, when you pick a bit up, you're going to have a go. You're going to be quizzed by your own mind about what's a good idea and a bad idea. Some of it you'll remember and some of it you won't. As long as you're enjoying yourself, that's all that matters. It's quite funny because um, I used to have a used to keep chickens and the roosters used to get quite wound up because uh, you're getting this <coughs> and it's like <coughs> and they're all like getting wound up about this it was like it was something that sounded familiar to them and nowadays it's the pheasants that get a little bit sort of like they I kind of think there's a challenge going on which is quite cool. <laughs> It's like pulling the trigger, isn't it? You know, I still don't believe in that. That just, it just looks like a bad idea. Can you start kind of see what I'm talking about? Thin to, that's a better route. That makes sense? Your faces say no, but <laughs> you just have to believe me. And the other thing about it, we're dealing with a hundred million year old rock and when you, if you take yourself back into that mine and look at some of that flint, some of it looked good and some of it looked bad. Yeah. What I'm dealing with is some of it's good, some of it's bad. Over this side of the stone it's actually a purer piece and on that side it's more infused. It's a bit like it was it, everything that was dirty dropped to the bottom, leaving the top of the rock clean and that's quite often what you get, you actually, when you're breaking through a rock, you might actually steer yourself to one side. And suddenly we can start seeing, actually if we keep this up, the axe is going to drop out. I haven't even looked for the axe, all I've done is I've been continually taking high spots away. Right? That's all I've done. I've maintained the size of the flint as best I can and I've taken high spots away. The, hand, the axe head really can be the only outcome provided you don't get too much of that which is a crush. Now there's nothing in the way of that that's suddenly become a good idea. Anyway, I'll shut up and you'll just get on with this now, if I'm able to. Normally if you're doing that something's going wrong, but I should be going through with that. There's not anything really there. See that's only a shape at the moment. It's still not strong. So the consol consolidation comes from 
the abrasiveness, which is taking all the fragility off. And then when you look at it, you see that that's sticking forward in front of that. So that's actually stopping me getting to what I built. So I have to revisit that area. Now we have to do that. And that is what you should see and be able to recognise as a platform. It's a nice platform, and if you took the flake off, that shape, and you remove, that's the shape we're looking at, which is about 70 degrees. If it gets to 90 degrees, you are buggered. You cannot nap off of the square unless you're using, well, it's a different thinking. So quite often, when you pick up a piece of flint, you're going to have a square on the edge and everyone's going to do the same right so for example say like that was your choice of stone and you're thinking the middle of your tool is here i can bet my bottom dollar that everyone's going to do the same thing they're going to start trying to do this oh good and they're happy right because it's breaking but now watch it's just, you're just smashing it in so they'll give up after a little while, they'll turn it round, right, and they'll start playing the same game on the other side. Suddenly, oh, it's working, oh, they're all getting trapped in there now. So that's, that, going between them two lines is not a strategy. So what, what is the strategy? The strategy would be this. See that? We haven't even gone into that square edge. That's just a leader. This next one, see the square edge? Bye. <laughs> <laughs> see the square edge? I've st I'm stitching through it. And these flakes are all generating to the surface. And what we're getting behind is we're getting access. That'll be a conglomeration of zigzags. Okay, sometimes things will go wrong. But you see how we're coming through the square edge? That's the technique. I mean, it's not a good bit of flint, but maybe it's a good bit of flint, a big enough, decent enough bit of flint to show you what I meant, how you can walk into a trap. So if I see you walking into a trap, it means you didn't listen. <laughs> <laughs> so let's, let's just finish this off then, and then you can see, because you could get that far, and then you could ruin it. We are still looking for what we contribute to high spots. So there's a high spot, an obvious one. So we get to the back of him. The other thing is, is you see that? That's depth control. So if I wanted to be making a dagger, we're going deeper. But because I'm making an axe, I need to keep some shallowness going on. So we don't continually rob from the middle. Um, and generically, I don't really want to keep napping from the end because I'm trying to create an ovation. So what I'd like to do, if we were thinking through this axe, that axe lays there. So if you think about covering that up, it shows you what I've got left. I can use that material any way I want. There's a lot of material out there, isn't there? Um, but when you think it through, my biggest problem is here. And that's going to drive me that way. So I'm better off working with the problems and leaving areas that are in good condition behind, uh, alone for the minute. Because I'm trying to sort of sort it out so you can re make it relative in your own mind. So, <coughs> what I'm doing is there. You might think, well, it's not even he hasn't even gone a, gone to the problem. It's a problem because it won't let me in. So there's no point in going to it. What I'm going to do is I'm going to sneak up on it. Good idea. So what I've done is I've taken a flake out there. That's really available and clean. Bye.
you know? You come in from the side, you get out. You turn that round again. It might have left a bit of a mess at the side of the stone, but technically the problem's gone. Now I can just pull the tidying up. I don't have to think about the axe. I have to think about where I'm at. The axe might be 75 steps away, and for me to think about every 75, 75 steps would be ludicrous, stupid. You've got to stay where you are, you know, and I'm there, so don't worry about anything else. And it'd be fair to say I could take a little more. This leads on to that, so we don't have to look around. You can see we've got a little bit of a problem in there. We could start hitting that, but if you see, that's got complications. That's really not a good friend, right? So what we do is we get rid of it so we can give ourselves something we can work with. I know this is taking a lot longer than 10 minutes but literally when you stop explaining and stop pointing things out all the time you rip through these in no time at all. You see at the moment it's still quite a chaotic thing. But what you'll start seeing is as we get closer we can be more a little bit more delicate, although we've still got to mean it. You can imagine sitting there, you've got the miners, you've got, you've got, they're passing all this flint up and the nappers are waiting for it. They're producing a variety of tools and you've got people arriving through the, through the landscape. And they're coming to trade because they potentially wouldn't be able to flint that because they haven't come from a land where flint is. And they want some of these lovely polished axes they've been hearing about. And then they're heading off back through a landscape which has only been described to them by wayward markers and things like that. I reckon Grimes Graves, if you've been to the hub of something today, the epicentre of Flint. Okay, so you can see now you can start seeing the journey beginning to creep in. It's that sound. I think the land can hear the song of the stone. 
and even sometimes when we've chopped chopped trees down with a stone and people have been present I've said to them you know never mind having a conversation at this point just listen to the forest being chopped with a flint axe for the first time in so many thousands of years so the question always comes up quite often comes up how does it do it Not relative, is it? The beaver doesn't ask itself how quick it can get a tree down because it knows it's using the front of its face. <laughs> it was um, it was quite an experience dropping my phone down the long drop. <laughs> I heard this clunk, and I went. I said to myself, "What's your phone?" I said, "No, it will, it will be in my car." I don't know full well I put it in my pocket. So I went up and checked in my car. And I was like, no, it won't be on my phone. It'll be in the roundhouse. I went and looked in the roundhouse. You're going to need a torch. I went and looked and it was looking up at me. <laughs> <laughs> and I thought, how are you going to get that out? <laughs> so I got a pair of welding tongs. And I tied a, sp a spear to each handle. And then I was down, but they wouldn't open wide enough to go around the phone. I didn't discover that until I started prodding it. And it was descending into the shit. Then I did get it, my tongs around it, but they wouldn't shut far enough to squeeze onto it. And it's going further and further. The worst thing was actually managing finally to grab hold of it and pulling it up. Well, that kind of gets us somewhere nearby where an axe should be. I'd probably like to redress this front. I don't like the look of that too much. It's a bit it's not quite right. Imagine some, you, you've got somebody has got to be encouraged to spend the next hundred hours of their life smoothing this out. At least want to, at least want to be happy to receive it, don't they? They didn't chop timber. They didn't need it. But they took the tree stone. Not in the Paleolithic. There's no evidence of man chopping the tree So all you've got is you've got man being part of the land. You never see an animal with a log on its back. Mankind was living right in tune with that. It wasn't until the Mesolithic period came that people started thinking about lakes and thinking about actually having homes on lakes and they start piling, making pilings and getting homes out on water. That's your game changer. Um, they, a lot of the people in the Mesolithic period were taking this and they're thinking like this. They're thinking, I need a ha harpoon. Yeah. If you looked at, I keep talking about Star Car because it's, it's the most rich resource of being able to see a Mesolithic lifestyle that we have in Britain. Lots and lots of fine little antler harpoons, um, things like that, which is a, um, a pendant with markings on. Uh, archaeology hasn't come up with a very good explanation for Richard what that 